Here is the mighty eagle, the symbol of our country. And here is the pigeon, who most people associate with decorating the symbols of our country. Pigeons had its public relations problems, but so have cats and dogs and canaries. All through history, the pigeon has actually been a friend of man. As humans have become more civilized, our love for the pigeon has grown, and the pigeon has worked hard to earn our affection. Although it's not known when the homing instinct was first discovered, pigeon racing has been documented since ancient times. As far back as 200 AD, bets were placed on the outcome of races. During the last century, the sport of pigeon racing has become highly organized. Pigeon racing clubs exist today all over the world. There are over 100,000 pigeon fanciers in the United States alone. Longtime pigeon man Frankie Polio lives in the Catskill Mountain region of New York State. He gathers the offspring of his favorite birds and takes them to an auction at the Northern Catskill Club. At the auction, bidding on each bird is based on its physical condition and its inherited potential to win races. The auction birds are trained by their new owners for the big auction race held by the club later in the season. I got 27 looking for 30. 27 looking for 30. I got 28. I got 28 dollars looking for 30. I got 29. You put up one, I know it's one dollar. I got 20. If you put up this many, I'm going to give you a fiver. <laughs> what was the price? <laughs> 29 dollars. <laughs> well, let's say we got 50. <laughs> okay, 29 dollars. I got 30. I got 30. I got thirty dollars. I got thirty dollars once, twice, three times. So who bought it? Sell. Sell? Some pigeons at that age will show signs um, that are much more superior than the rest just by looking at it. And when you handle the bird, you can feel the muscle quality of it, the power of the wing muscles the texture of the feather, the quality of the feather, which this bird showed every quality a pigeon could show to the, to the eye and to the feel. Other than that, we can just wait for the races to come to see if everything else will prove out. Pigeons only know three things. It's safety of their home, food, and love of their mate. So when you can use those things to make them fly quicker or desire to be home faster because they know what's going to be there for them, you've got an advantage already on your side when you go into these races. Their owners teach them what they can, but it's the pigeons who must face the rigors of the race, often flying as far as 600 miles, speeds of up to 60 miles per hour. They fly without rest, facing the perils of weather, wires, and birds of prey. No one knows for sure what drives the homing instinct. Pigeons may be able to sense the position of the sun, or they may feel the magnetic pull of the earth. But most fanciers agree that no creature on earth has a greater love of home than the racing pigeon. 
It takes a person with a strong pigeon sense to win a pigeon racing trophy. A fancier who consistently raises winning pigeons is recognized by his peers as a keen knower of birds. When I started 40 years ago, everything was a secret. Everything was, there was no, there were books on the market, but they didn't really tell you the things that you were supposed to actually know. You've got to know more or less, you've got to be, be a dietitian with these pigeons. You've got to know when to feed them carbohydrates, you've got to know when to feed them protein food. I don't know, maybe I have Italian pigeons, but I give them garlic two or three times a week in their drinking water. And if I can't buy the liquid garlic, I buy the cloves and I put it in the blender and I blend it. We train hard, we feed well, they get more vitamins than my kids get, and in the end I think it's going to pay off. There are probably as many theories on raising racing pigeons as there are pigeon racers. To me the tamer the birds are, the better they are. Pigeon racers don't do it just for the sake of their birds. It's a highly competitive sport. You know, when the weather gets tough, you gotta have the stuff. And if you don't have the stuff, forget it. Well, I've won more races than anybody in the whole Hudson Valley. <laughs> what more could I say? At the end of the year, you see who's the winner around here. Who's gotta come on my house, I'll show you all the diplomas. <laughs> This is my prediction of Saturday's race winner. This is the bird we talked about before that came from the auction. I believe that I will be the leaper and the rest will be the weepers. It's a Long Island bird. A friend of mine, Brett, in Long Island, gave it to me to fly. In late summer, Frank Polio drives his birds to the clubhouse for the first step of the big auction race. From the clubhouse, the birds will be taken to the Liberation, the start of the race over 300 miles away. But first, each bird is marked with its own numbered band. Manny, you want to come over and watch the uh, banding of the birds? Come on over here. And they put a rubber band on, which is numbered. And they match that number with the uh, number that was on the bird's foot. And they enter it on the sheet. Right now, they're putting them in other crates to hold for the truck. When the truck comes in, we transport them into the truck. Did you want to see what they're doing with the clocks in there? These are the, what you call a committee that takes care of the clocks. Uh -huh. uh, the thing is, when the bird comes home, he has a rubber band on that they put on. You've seen them putting oh, the counter marks on. Uh, when the bird comes home, we take the counter mark out, put it in the capsule, drop it in here. There's a key here, and it stamps the time like a time clock. There's the hour, the minute, the second, and the day on here. And that's how we read these tapes. The owners have special clocks, which they start at precisely the same time. Five, four, three, two, one, finish! Uh-oh, a late one someplace. I heard it. That wasn't me, no way. Ah, uh, there's a late no one someplace. Way. In other words, like I said to you, everything is on a split second here. Yeah, that's how close we figure this out. Let's go out see what's going to happen. The clocks record the time it takes each bird to travel from liberation to its home loft. The distance between the liberation point and each loft is measured exactly, and the winner is the bird with the fastest average race speed. In the last step before the race, the birds are packed in a special truck for the trip to the liberation. How many race crates have we got? 15. 15 you got, yeah. I have no kids, man, but I treat my wife better than my pigeons. Although I love my pigeons too, you know. They're like a pastime for me. They've been that way all my life, really. They call me a, like a bird freak, you know, feather freak. 
I love feathers. <laughs> I'm a feather lover. When I was young, the first bird I ever had was canary. You know, I got it. I don't think I was more than six or seven years old. A woman down the block had him in the porch in a house. And she had these here, uh, well, they were all glass doors, you know, little glass squares. I bust one of the squares because she had them in a porch to get the canary. It was in the cage. My mother, when I got home, she got crazy. She made me bring it back. What do you call them doors with all the glass in it? French doors. French door. Yep. The pigeon van, which drove through the night, arrives at the liberation point near dawn. The trucker checks the weather to be sure it's safe for the birds to go. Then he calls the club's liberator, who's waiting at home to start the race. Good morning, Ed. You had a safe trip? Very good. How's the weather out there? Not too bad? What kind of wind do you have? Southwest wind? All right. Southwest? All right, very good. That's very good. All right, Ed, we'll shoot for an 8 o'clock liberation. Any different, you give me a call. All righty? All righty. Bye. Have a safe trip. Bye, well. Well, now I got to notify everybody. Hi, Bill. John. Good. How you doing? 8 a.m. Southwest winds. Clear out there. The boys are going to go up at 8 o'clock, Lee. Hello? And they will be liberated from 300 miles and approximately 8 o'clock in the morning. 
So if they go up 8 o'clock in the morning, it will take them approximately 7 hours. And you sit out here and enjoy the sunshine and wait for the birds to come. We go on a trip and we need a road map and we have to ask somebody where, where we make a right and where we make a left and we still get lost. And I don't give these birds any money for any car fare to stop off at motels or nothing. They come home on their own and they do a pretty good job on it too. This is what you call a sat net and uh, we use these for droppers. Some people call them chicos. But uh, we use these so when the birds are coming home from flight, we toss them out and they just fly to where the birds are supposed to land, like by the trap, and then they run right in and it, you know, draws the other bird to come down and go right in. That's what it does. That means the race. Eight races in a row. The bird should have been in the paper, both of them. Well, the see, bird was in every race since, since he put him in the, in the club. You see, the, the bird has good qualifications just to look at it. I mean, the way I feel, that's my opinion. Uh, I, I, I like to see a bird with a terrific, strong iris. But to find a bird that will race, put its heart out, you've got to go a long way to find them. They're few. Maybe out of uh, every couple of hundred birds you breed, you're lucky to breed one good one. One good one. one, good one. And, that's, and if you breed two, that's a terrific breeding season. The day before shipping the race to the Olympics, I put these seven females in the, in the loft with all the males that were also separated from females. And when they all started to uh, get together and get to their nests and feel really happy to be with each other, I went in there and selected the seven females and shipped them away, which left them the only thing in their minds that they could think about was to get back home quick for their mates. So it really did a high mental psych on them, and uh, that's the reason why I think I won the race. Oh, God, the hawks are bothering them, huh? Four hawks over there. Holy cow. Oh, boy, they're after the Chicos, huh? Yeah, he's having a rough time. I, c I can imagine. kind of weather I needed though. Yeah. You can hardly see the mountains. I think the heat's really settling in. Probably be a seven and a half hour race, maybe better. Boy, yeah, it is hazy out there. Look at that. Look at the heat ray rays. Just gotta hope we're up front and stay there. Really? And wear them down. Well, we got a couple of good ones in here be able to handle this. That's a hawk? Hawk. Yeah, hawk. Ah, he's just moving around. I'll clock him if he comes down. Yeah. <laughs> Take anything today. There is definitely a hawk in the area.
Come on, baby. Come on. Guys, let's go. Got him, buddy? Yeah, I got him, I got him. Right They're coming. They're for us. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, baby. Eddie, any bird that hits the board, take the first bird. There they come. Come on, baby. Come on. Give me yours. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, right Come on. Come on. Get yeah, get the phone, honey. It's probably one of the short enders. Come on, baby, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Which one, Eddie? There's four birds right now, you know? Yeah. Really? So, yeah, if they come in. They're flying around now. If they come down, that would be beautiful because... Here's one, hon. Here's one. Okay, I will. Come on, get in there, get in there, Get him. Hey, hon, that's the nominator. Okay, that's another one. Way to go. Two yeah. birds, two birds, two birds on the drop. Go. Two birds on the drop. Oh, man. I told you they were right, John. They were right today. They were ready. Meanwhile, back at the loft, the birds settled down for a well-needed rest in the pursuit of family matters. All is peaceful again, except for the occasional domestic spat. All the time, all the time, I wish I could just go in there and 
turn into a pigeon for about a week. And if you could come back when you die, I'd like to come back as a pigeon, but he would have to belong to somebody like me. <laughs> I want to make sure That's I got a chance of survival, right. right. You love your birds? Oh, yes, I do. Yes, sir, I sure do. I like them pigeons to me. That's part of my life is my birds. I've had birds now since I was six years old. Come on, Incredible. Come on, baby. We named this one Incredible. We practically brought this one up ourselves. I mean, uh, when she was a baby. He's a beautiful bird. I said, he's a terrific bird. Huh, where's my boy? Where's my good boy? Hmm? Where's my good boy? Hmm? You good baby? Sure. Hmm. Good baby. What do you think that is over there? Hmm? I think that's what Joe bred into his birds. Never quit. Never fold your wings. Keep on coming. If you keep on coming, something's going to go. And usually it's the race. Right here. <laughs> I used to think when a hawk grabs a bird, he used to rip, just start, rip just up the, the feed bag. Just to take feed. He don't take no, the feed bag. He they eats eat the bird. Thing. They don't eat the feed bag. He, he, he eats everything but the feathers. Everything but the feed. He eats the feathers too. Feathers too. And, and they die together. <laughs> the they don't eat the feed. They don't eat the feed at all. He eats the meat. Feed will kill them. They eat the meat. Exactly. The whole bird. <laughs> where are we eating like I don't know where you want to eat. <laughs> That's right. My husband Good. Howard, Good night. but I Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, you know this? The two, both big races Lee knocked off. He knocked off the auction, the pop auction, and this. Both of them he won. He's got good birds. So. Thank you.